Welcome to Age of the Obsolete, a weekly podcast that examines the intersection of technology, democracy, and the future of work. I'm your host, John Revito. The days were long, the work monotonous. Hour after hour, rows of mustachioed men in starched white shirts sat in La Galleria, slicing and rolling tobacco leaves into thick cigars. The atmosphere was cacophonous, one in which the metallic grind of the delivery trucks blended seamlessly with the incessant tapping of knives on the cutting boards. And above it all, soaring free like an uncaged bird, was the voice of the lector. The lector was a professional paid by the factory workers to ease their toil by reading aloud from the daily newspapers, papers, as well as from novels such as Don Quixote and The Count of Monte Cristo. So highly valued was a lector that the workers would hold auditions and reward the selected candidate with contributions from each man's pay. In addition to a loud and sonorous voice, the lector needed to have end oratorical skills and be capable of acting out multiple parts. If a reading was well received, the workers would wrap their knives on the cutting boards to show their appreciation. The tradition of the lector began in Cuba during the second half of the 19th century and continues to this day factories and galerias across that country. But what about here in the United States? I'm standing on the 26th floor of a major financial institution, a few blocks west of Wall Street in downtown Manhattan. Though it's the middle of the day, the day the floor is completely soundless. If I didn't know better, I'd think it was deserted. A steel and glass cenotaph erected in homage to an unknown hero from a distant time. But of course there are people here. Hundreds of programmers, analysts, and project managers, all of them silently row after row of six-foot-high acoustically paneled cubicles. I'm here today because I have a three o'clock appointment with a senior IT manager, but somehow I've lost my way and can't find his office. And yet I'm hesitant to ask for directions. Doing so would would break the silence and, I assume, the concentration of those I'd be disturbing. It's as if silence were an unspoken rule, the corporate synapse connecting focus and productivity. Which is why here in corporate America, we have no lectors to lighten our day. Because here, here, work is not to be confused with play. Work is serious and demands attention, not wandering minds that stray from their task. But as the Cuban workers understood, their minds were never disengaged. Rather than compromising their work, the readings of the lector eliminated the monotony of souls and stoked their imaginations. So rather than dread the approaching day, they instead looked forward to the stories yet to come. Word in my power, I would become a lector. I would sit on a bed on a platform high above the silence and each day read aloud to the men and women working below. Poems and stories filled with magical enchantments, tales of courage and commitment, passion and betrayal. I would celebrate the strange and the fantastical with tropes and metaphor and singing verse. And there would be color, tone, nuance and subtlety. I would touch their souls and stoke their imaginations, and rather than stumble, productivity would soar until at last. But why go on? I cannot be a lector. Who would hire me? Who would have the courage courage to say that the work we do requires not only skill and training and expertise, but an imaginative grasp of the endless possibilities? No, I cannot be a lector. But the hope remains that one day I can. This is John Revito. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions or want additional information on any of the topics covered in these podcasts, please go to our website at ageoftheobsolete.com. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.